state hearings held by the Board of Education this week uh, concerning possible consolidation plan. And with that, we uh, open up the speakers to speak before the board. Each speaker has five minutes. Uh, there's no yielding of time. And uh, at the conclusion of the speakers, uh, if there are any questions to ask, we'll write, the board members will write them down. We won't interact at the same time with the board members. If questions, we'll write them down and try to get those answered in one form or the other. And then conclude with board member comments. There is no vote that's taken on this this evening. It's just to hear from the public. So uh, with that, uh, we will start our delegations. And I said five minutes time, there's the timer clock to be uh, over here on the board. And the uh, comments need to be confined to uh, the Salem Elementary uh, possible closing only. So with that, uh, first speaker, Brandy Knight. Good evening, I'm Mrs. Brandon, a fourth grade teacher and intermediate team leader. I have been teaching at Salem since 2012 and taught at three other Harrison County schools before that. In this building, I've seen two different administrators in many different culture and climates, and I can say that now, our staff is the best that I've ever had the privilege of working with. Over half of the staff drives 45 minutes or more one way just to be part of this amazing little school. Many of our teachers even come from other counties, not because there aren't positions close to home, but because to be a part of this school, our home, and home to our kids. Every morning, all of our students are greeted at the door by name, with a smile, a hug, high five, or fist bump, every single day. For some kids, this is the only positive adult contact they get. In the past and presently, our teachers have provided tutoring, holiday and other meals, after school programs, clothes, books, and yes, love for our students. I know that all of my colleagues that are here tonight agree with me when I say that we are here for the kids. Sadly, your plan brings this to an end after next year. As soon as the next 24-25 school year, many of our classrooms will be at capacity, making our small class sizes a thing of the past. Next year, and every year after, we'll have 25 students, at least, compared to the average 14 that we have had in the past. It has been proven by many sources, including U.S. News, Education Report, and the New York Times, that smaller class sizes correlate to better student outcomes. There have been a myriad of different studies examining the effects of class size reduction, but one that stands out is the Tennessee Star Trial, which followed 7,000 kindergarten students. They placed these students in 79 different schools with varying class sizes. After four years, the students who had been placed in small classes were almost two and a half months ahead of their peers in larger classes. Even after the experiment ended and the students returned to larger, larger classrooms, by eighth grade, these children were still almost a full school year ahead of their peers due to the small class sizes in elementary. All of the studies on this topic bear the same result, that smaller class sizes achieve better test scores, and Salem Elementary has been an example of this phenomenon year after year. Based on the newest use and World Report of Education Best Elementary Schools, Salem Elementary was rated number one in all Harrison County elementary schools. We are ranked 45th out of the 340 West Virginia elementary schools. Our school also ranked 54th in reading proficiency and 36th in math proficiency. As of right now, we have 186 students. At Salem Elementary, 52% of our students scored proficient or above in math, and 47 of our kids scored proficient or above in reading. To the public, these statistics may not seem like much to boast of, but in Harrison County, only 31% of students scored score proficient in math and 37 score proficient in reading. Again, that's three through five grades. In addition to exceeding the county, our students did better in math and reading compared to others across the state. In the entire state, only 37% of kids tested proficient in reading and 30% of math. I have included a copy of these scores on each table and I feel you guys probably have that as well. As of now, we have 20 full-time teachers, all of which are certified elementary and we have a ratio of 10 to one. 
85% of our teachers have three or more years of experience. We do not have a full-time counselor. In the past couple years, we have had less than 10 behavior incidents based on Weavis. In Weavis, 66 of our 186 students have IEPs and 17 have 504s, which means around 40% of our student population have a learning difference. And we still were 22% above the state proficiency level in math and above the state level in reading. Keep in mind that these scores were achieved without a certified special education teacher, grades three through five for over a year and a half. Our scores were so good that even other counties noticed and came to observe the ways our teachers were instructing, and our students didn't even get recognition from the board. Of course, we as a staff compensated for this. We celebrated the fact that our kids, our school, with all the cards stacked against them, rocked these tests. I realize I am out of time. My colleague, Mrs. Cox, from his primary team leader, will finish my speech for me. Thank you. the changes that will take place next year are scary. We are losing nine positions next year, including four classroom teachers, which means we will have one pre-K, one first, one fourth, and one fifth. We already have one kindergarten, and students are already on a waiting list for that. We currently have a family who live in the Salem area with a sibling group who are currently not able to attend Salem together due to staffing reduction. Based on today's numbers, next year the fourth grade will have 23 students and 43% of them have IEPs. Fifth grade will have 28 and 42 of those have students have IEPs. And this, and this number does not include 504s. State law mandates that the general education classroom can only have 30% special education without a co-teacher. We can have 50% with a co-teacher <coughs> but with one special education teacher covering all 66 students, many with both reading and math services, not to mention social, organizational, and behavioral skills. I'm not sure how this will work. This year, and even before, the board has failed these kids by not providing them all with a full-time special educator. General educators have done their best, but we are not certified special educators, so some students could not get their minutes met, which is breaking the state law. Please understand that I am not implying that Northview and WI do not deserve a new school because these kids definitely do. In fact, in the Harrison County 10-year plan, over $60 million was earmarked to build three new schools for them. Of course, this did include Norwood, but this year that school was forced to close. So somewhere there should still be $60 million to fund a brand new schools. Also noted in that plan, Salem is considered a permanent school, which means that it is to be utilized throughout the planning period of 2020 to 2030, without a change to its present use and configuration. It only had projected $2 million update budget, one of the smallest in the county, to bring everything up to standards and code. I know it has been mentioned in previous meetings, but Salem, but previous Salem elementary student has earned a full ride scholarship to Yale. If this does not prove that small schools create great kids, I'm not sure you understand for those kids. If nothing else, I've said what I've said here today makes a difference. Know that our school has always been a huge part of our community and these kids are the most important thing. Our teachers have always done what is best for the kids and I would hope that you, the leaders of our district, feel the same way. Is it the best thing for the kids to eventually become a number in a huge middle and high school? Is it the best thing for these children to be on buses for over an hour? Is it the best for these students to lose their favorite teachers, many of whom have had their siblings over the years? Is it the best thing for these kids to be in a class of 28 when they have always been part of a classroom community of 14? Is it best to pack the classroom so full that one teacher may struggle to meet the needs of all students, many needing several modifications, while other students will be forced to survive on their own? Is just surviving the best thing for these kids? 
I know that for me, teaching is what I'm meant to do and I will follow my kids wherever they may land. But I would hope that the education, as educational leaders, the needs of these kids are being heard and taken to heart because I know that everyone in this building does that every single day. I do have a few letters written by our students that my colleague, Ms. Finho, will read. Thank you. my home, my second home, for 11 years. If you haven't had a chance to walk our building and facilities, I encourage you to do so. Mr. Tucker, we'd like to thank you personally for taking the time to visit us on several occasions. You will find a welcoming environment with a large library, two computer labs, two steam rooms to service primary and intermediate, a fantastic gym space, two speech rooms, three special education rooms to service self-contained primary and intermediate, a Title I room, a large cafeteria, which also serves as a bus room, and our grounds are unmatched, including a well-equipped playground for pre-K and our K-5 through students. Our fabulous field, hiking trail, outdoor classrooms, and sundial, which provide countless lessons and memorable activities. That doesn't even include the tremendous administration and staff that I have the honor to work with. And with all that, it serves Salem Community as its evacuation center. My question is, why would you sacrifice this building? Which also brings me to my second question. Have we exhausted all possible remedies? If you don't think our students are stressing about this, I have a few letters for you written by our exceptional Salem students. Dear Board of Education, merging every class of Salem Elementary is an unpleasant idea. As proven by many teachers and scientists, smaller classes just do better. Combining all of these students will result in 28 kids in all. The problem, currently mixing Mrs. Knight's class and Mrs. Heinerman's class will equal 28 children, but three through five grade can only hold an amount of 27 students. See the problem. A kid will have to go, and nobody can afford to switch schools or move. You are also transferring a lot of teachers who worked hard to get here, and think of all the devastated kids who are losing their favorite teacher. Should we consolidate bus rides will take over an hour, tired staff, long lines, and more disagreements. Not a great look if you want a reputation that is good. Just, just think about this. Sincerely, Brooklyn Buffy. Dear Board of Education, I've known about the consolidation, but I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't consolidate Salem because we've already been through a lot in Salem. We've had many people leave us, including staff. Also, we've had many things happen to Salem, and now we have no elementary school to keep up the population. I hear that the new elementary school will have 400 <coughs> students, the middle school will have 900 students, and the high school will have 1,200 students. I think that's way too many kids. Bus rides will be for over an hour, and that means kids could be late to after-school activities or early activities. Thank you for listening to my concerns, Charlotte. To whom it happens to concern, I don't think this is a good idea for so many reasons, but this will be my 10 pages long, but this would be 10 pages long, so I'll only list a few. First, think of the students. It has been scientifically proven that smaller classes are more likely to succeed than larger ones. Not to mention, it just doesn't make sense were you even thinking about the consequences this action may cause. Just think about the kids, not only their education, but their well-being. That brings me to the next topic, social anxiety. Did you know that 94% of children that are ages three through 17, 5.8 million, have been diagnosed with anxiety in 2016 through 2019? I know it's 2024, but even so, think about that number raised. You're probably thinking, what does this have to do with combining schools? Combining schools will make a child's anxiety rise by the amount of students that would be in the classroom. That could also make a student's grades lower. That's not all I have, but I think my reasons mentioned prove my point. Thank you, Alex Campbell.
Hello, my name is Misty Renner, and I'm a third grade teacher here at Salem Elementary. However, tonight I am speaking to you as a parent of children that attend Mountaineer Middle and Liberty High School. They are both a product of Salem Elementary. My husband and I grew up locally and are both graduates of Liberty High School. My husband joined the Air Force shortly after high school and dedicated the next 20 years to a career in the military. As we had our two children during that time, we had a choice to make of life after the military and decide where to retire and where would be the best place to raise our young children. We could have chosen anywhere because after 20 years, nowhere seemed quite like home for us. So in 2014, we decided to bring our children home to West Virginia. We both felt we had a great upbringing in West Virginia and wanted our children to have the same small town, small school, caring and loving people, and all around safe place to grow up. When we arrived, my youngest son Trenton started second grade that year, and my youngest son Aaron began, began pre-K here in Salem. My oldest son has ADHD and was struggling with reading and having behavior problems in the large school he attended in South Dakota before we moved. When we got to Salem Elementary, the, the teachers went above and beyond to help him learn to read, and his behavior approved, improved immediately. It was like he was a different kid. The nurturing environment, small class sizes, and wonderful staff made all the difference. As a teacher in the school, I was worried when he got to to Mountaineer Middle, he would slip. However, Mountaineer Middle proved to be the same. Small class sizes and caring teachers. Today, my son has a 4.0 GPA, is in honors and college classes as a sophomore, and still makes time to be in multiple extracurricular activities. I don't believe this scenario would have played out the same had we not picked Harrison County, West Virginia. My youngest son is also top of his class and is very involved with band, sports, and in honors classes as well at Mountaineer Middle School. We have been very fortunate that he also went through Salem Elementary and Mountaineer Middle. And now he will become a freshman <coughs> guinea pig of what happens when you place 1,200 rival students in the same building. With all that being said, unfortunately, we are now faced with a difficult decision to make as parents. We were told by Liberty High School that Trenton might not have certified teachers for the classes he needs to prepare for a future in engineering, and that we might have to transfer him to RCB in the next fall. This is due to the fact that a majority of the well-certified senior staff of Liberty felt it necessary for them to leave due to the talk of merger with RCB. But here's the caveat, Trenton won't be fully driving until late fall, which means if we transfer him, no busing is provided, and we have to take him. Kind of impossible for working parents. Also, Trenton wants to stay with his friends at Liberty, and rightfully so. It is appalling that we are backed into a corner regarding our son's futures. I have always taught in public schools and have had the highest respect for the quality of education they provide. And here in Harrison County, I am not only proud of their education, but the relationships they have made with teachers and peers due to the low student-teacher ratios. However, my husband and I are now highly considering our other options. Virtual, homeschooling, private school, charter schools. It's sad we even have to consider these options. This consolidation and lack of providing my children what they need in school to succeed in school keeps me up at night. It makes me think I can't be the only parent feeling this way. Almost a third of our Harrison County student population is being affected by these mergers and consolidations. What is the end goal of all of this for our county? The education system has changed drastically over the past few years, and parents have more educational choices than ever before. And as a teacher, I have seen more and more parents choosing those other educational paths for their children. Virtual, private school, homeschool, and now even charter schools. Do we really want all of our students to leave the Harrison County school system? The math is quite simple. No students, no money, no job for any of us. Because the bottom line is, our business is teaching students. 
And right now, we are driving our business away. These decisions you are making on April 16th affect everyone in the community, not just the students. Thank you. My name is Taylor Leon, and I'm a graduate of Salem Elementary. My brother currently attends Salem, my sister is at Mount Your Middle, and I currently attend Liberty. So we all will be affected by this proposed merger. This small school where kids attend in their own community is very important. In any research that has been conducted, where have you found that larger schools to be more beneficial than small schools? Where have you found that less teacher-student ratio is a good thing besides from, from a financial standpoint? Is the financial aspect of these mergers what is most important to this board? Are you so far removed from being in school that you can't see the bigger picture? We live in West Virginia, a state that, that always comes in last or next to last for many things. People flee this state for many reasons, and now many teachers in our own county are fleeing because they don't want to teach at large schools. Many West Virginians are uneducated and illiterate, and by making large elementary, middle, and high schools, many kids will fall in the cracks and end up in other West Virginia statistic. Salem has statistically had higher test, higher test scores than the other schools in Liberty's feeder area. Kids feel at home here, and the smaller classrooms are where, are where kids thrive. There is a newer way for the preschool and kindergarten kids with a fenced-in playground right outside its doors. There are private bathrooms in those rooms which, when younger kids might have accidents and need to change. Please take a walk around and really look at this building. It is in good shape. Why would you consider closing it? It is very much needed by these kids in this community. This building also may become a charter school, which essentially means more competition to our public schools because we will lose even more students. Have you looked into redistricting, redistricting Wilsonburg and sending some students here and allowing Northview and Adamston to go to victory? That would solve the problem of Northview needing a new building. We here at Salem do not need a new building. We love our small school, and it would be a detriment and a shame for you to lose it. By making small kids go on larger buses to a larger school where they receive less attention, instruction, and guidance, how is this beneficial for these kids? Please try to remember that it, what it is, remember what it is like to be in school, and please put the best interests best interest of the kids first when making your decision. We are not just a number. Thank you. Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how many continents do we have? There's seven. 
different continents. Hey, Toby, do you remember what you asked me when you first saw me? Ask them if they can name them dwarf planets. The dwarf planets are. What are the dwarf planets? <laughs> <laughs> what are the dwarf planets? The planets are Ceres, Hygieia, Pluto. Uh, oh man, I can't hear you. Sorry, um. Does your mom do your job now? They care for him more than any other school would, and he'd fall in the cracks at any other school. Um, he has autism and ADHD, and we're just gonna play a little game called Name the Flag. We have like all the country's flags here. I'm a, so I'm, I'm sure here's the flag right. if you guys want to see. Okay, Kobe, what is this? Mozambique. Okay. Pakistan. <laughs> Democratic Republic of the Congo. <laughs> and he's right. So that proves my point that smaller classes work better than classes, than bigger classes. You cannot expect to fit 50 kids in a 960 square feet room and expect everyone to learn the same and understand the same amount that another kid will. 
That's all I have. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for being here. Um, I just have five questions, and I don't really have any comments. Uh, other than I come from a business background, I understand about trying to save money. Uh, so, first question, why did board member Mary Frances Smith make a comment in the Exponent Telegram this past weekend claiming that all the schools being consolidated are in horrible condition for the children and the teachers to work in? This is not horrible. Has the county looked into redistricting as an option as opposed to consolidation? What is, question number three, what is the projection for the number of open special education teacher positions for the next year in the county? Number four, what will be the total student population count B if Salem Northview merge, and how does that number convert into percentage of capacity? Number five, how much money was Thrasher Engineering paid to conduct the study that suggested the current proposed plan, and were there any other studies done, or just the one proposal from Thrasher? Thank you. fosters a sense of belonging to the students and the residents of this community, and it creates an identity. The closure of this school and the intent to relocate the students is nothing short of a social injustice. You, have single, you would single-handedly roll back the calendar to 1975, when Janet Polly filed a class action lawsuit against the Lincoln County school system. I'll remind you that in that Supreme Court in that the Supreme Court confirmed that education is a fundamental constitutional right. As a member of the City Council, I can say that not one member of the school board has come to any meeting to discuss this with us or to tell us what your, your plans are. Um, not one parent that I've spoken with feels that they have been heard. This leaves me with two questions for you. The first is when approached by a member of the community, and they have concerns about the consolidation of the school, what dollar amount can I tell them to have assigned to not only their identity, but the identity of their children in this community? The second is a question I hope you'll continually ask yourself. Is it just and equitable that many of these students left with fewer, will be left with fewer resources and opportunities than others in this county? I know that there are many parents who are worried that a lot of this money will be for, forwarded up to Bridgeport to build another high school up there eventually. I hope that that's not the case, but I will tell you that that is a concern of a lot of parents. Um, lastly, I would ask that you look at studies that have been done regarding commute times and academic performance. <laughs> the most recent one that I, met, I read was from 2022. It involved five large cities. And it proved that the longer the commute times, the increased amount of chronic absences, which decreased the academic performances of those schools. I would ask you that you listen to the parents of these children in this community, because they know their kids. Those letters that those kids wrote are, are humbling. That's something you have to hear. When you make this decision, <coughs> before you make this decision that will dismantle a community, I 
hope that you consider that Salem may be small, but we are not insignificant. Thank you. Thank you. Superintendent and board members, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, my name is Mark Williams, and after many sleepless nights, I've decided to write down about the injustices that have been leveled against Western Harrison County over the past many decades. My parents and my wife and myself have all been teachers in Harrison County and retired, serving since 1948 to 2023 when we uh, discontinued subbing. All of us spent most of the majority of our time in Western Harrison County Schools. The same area specifically seldom received the funding of Clarksburg and Bridgeport Schools. From my own perspective, one destabilization factor of Western Harrison County was the elimination of Bristol and Salem and victory into Liberty. My wife was the first graduated class from Liberty, I was in the second. After the consolidation, Salem Junior High was housed in the old Salem High School building until an arsonist burned the building to the ground. Salem Junior High was then housed in one of the buildings in the industrial home for girls until <coughs> the new school was built. In 2006, Salem Junior High and Ward Junior High schools were consolidated into Mount Near Middle. Salem lost a second school. Later, Van Horn and uh, Hardin Elementary schools were consolidated into Salem Elementary. Salem lost two more schools in 2007. Presently, the County Board of Education has decided to merge Liberty High School and Robert Seabird and can, uh, consolidating Mountaineer Middle and WI into the Liberty Building, moving the Salem Elementary and Northview Elementary School into Mountaineer, Mi uh, Mountaineer Middle Building, thus removing the last remaining school from Western Harrison County to Clarksburg. Over the past 50 years, our area has lost Victory, Gore, Bristol, Salem, Salem Junior High, Hardin, Van Horn, and now possibly Salem Elementary, Liberty, Mountaineer Middle. Adamson and Wilsonburg have already uh, gone to victory at the Old Gore building built in 1963. There are alternatives to this problem that does not require a new school, but maybe additions to RCD and Liberty, each of which have presently have empty space in each building. WI could go to RCD, Mountain Middle could go to Liberty. Some students from uh, victory for the uh, Wilsonburg area could be sent to Salem. Um, at the beginning of uh, Liberty's existence, as students there, there were over 800 students. There would be room with the addition of the uh, freshman uh, block for middle school students to attend there, leaving room for Northview to go to either Victory or Mountain or Middle. Uh, and I am also disappointed about a board member who has exercised undue influence to a personal vendetta of being overlooked for a coaching position at Liberty High School earlier in his career. He made it known then that as a board member he would see to it, that Liberty would be eliminated, and as is, was related to me by coaching friends. Our section of the county has undergone many losses in the past 50 years. I'm curious though, how Lost Creek Elementary has been able to remain open with 130 students for approximately 10 years or more. There are four schools in the South Harrison feeder area, uh, close to 1,141 students, while the Liberty feeder area has about 1,664, which at this time is the difference of a whole school population. The high school, the middle school, and the elementary school have already been consolidated once and are now being planned to consolidate again within the next 50 years. It certainly seems like a model of fairness, doesn't it? Another injustice took place approximately 30 years for Liberty to get a football and track field, look what facilities we received compared to the high schools in the county, other high schools in the county. And another example, a Dodgers County school bus travels east out of Long Run Road. It goes past my home in Harrison County, just down the road. The driver has two stops at the minor league field and the Baptist Lighthouse Church in Salem. He picks up 40 students, which should be going to Harrison County. He then exits onto Route 50 west in Salem passes by this school and goes westward to Dodgers County Schools. The total cost of the loss, federal funding, federal funding of $101,926 of federal money per student 
and for state, $7,337 per student equals 9,253 multiplied by 40 would be $370,120, which should be going to this county. Um, why does this have to continue? In short, it doesn't, Madam Superintendent. Lastly, you cannot revitalize communities when you have no schools in them. Board members have commented that it is not their job to help revitalize communities. I would suggest there are some county board members, remember, it is constituents that elect them. Therefore, it is their obligation to be supportive of their communities. Companies and businesses and families will not move into communities without schools. The board is not being supportive of Western Harrison County. With no school, I will personally, this is not a popular idea, but I will not uh, support the excess levy without a school. I also think there ought to be a call for no confidence to be brought before the Harrison County Board of Education and the current Harrison County Superintendent. I have just one more little paragraph. I would think the forums that people have attended on this issue would have occurred before the board already made up their minds to proceed. Current board members will not receive much support from public from voting public in Western Harrison County. My name is Robert Andrews. I have a farm here. And I need to say to begin with, uh, our schools are mirrors of our society. I've heard a lot of great speeches here today, especially the first two ladies that uh, put on a great show. Most of everything I need to say or ask has already been discussed. Transportation, do we have enough drivers? Look at all the time that we're gonna spend going back and forth. And also, the parents, if something happens to one of our students, getting there and helping those kids is very important to us. Look at all these faces. Look at all this interest and concern about us keeping this school open. Can we do that? And I challenge you, sir, everyone, to come up with an option to keep it open. We love our schools here. The students do. We do a good job. And our student to teacher ratio is something that's very, you know that, I know that. And if we can teach each student, especially at home, that was really brilliant. If we can teach each student to achieve more and more each time versus going to a school, we're going to have a ratio of what, 30 to 1? We don't want that. We want to keep them here where we can teach them, and the child's are going to go forth into a college and a career. And that's what we need careers. Thank you very much. whether by retirement or by transfers this year alone, that should offer much needed relief in the money department. New students will always come out of the woodwork here at Salem Elementary. We have always had a huge number show up at the last minute. Yet, much money is being spent always prepping for the consolidations at schools at the high school already. Are you truly, truly aware of the length of time the youngest children will be on these new bus routes? That is a huge concern. For example, the length of time in a car just from Salem Elementary to Mountaineer Middle is 19 minutes. In a bus, it would be much longer. Given the country roads and the haulers that the majority of these children live, I can't fathom how long they will be on the bus, including all of the bus stops. 
they would potentially be riding these buses one way from anywhere 45 minutes to an hour. Article 2E, high quality educational programs, standards for the duration of school bus transportation times for students to and from school. This policy, West Virginia Policy Code, states for elementary school students, 30 minutes. There is a lot of language in this code and I will only quote a small part. This is if there's additional minutes. A county board may not create, nor may the state board permit the creation of a new bus route for the transportation <coughs> of students in any of the grade levels pre-kindergarten through grade five to and from any school included in a school closure, consolidation, or new construction project approved after July 1, 2008, which exceeds by more than 30 minutes. The recommended duration of the one-way school bus the 30 minutes, the recommended duration of the one-way school bus transportation time for elementary students adopted by the State Board in accordance with the subsection A of this section. That's a lot of language. I have a copy of this, if you would like it. I have a copy for each one of you. The decision that you are about to make is going to impact 200 plus lives. You will be rewriting their lives, careers, families, churches, in businesses. A lot is at stake. At least contemplate keeping Salem Elementary. Please consider all of the information that has been presented to you today before you decide. Finally, we need to pray in first in all things to be led toward God's will and not means. God bless. Bobby Samples, the mayor of the city of Salem, and I would like to welcome the board here this evening and all the parents and all that have come out. We have written letters asking you to keep the elementary school in this community. We think it's very important to the community and in community building. And um, you've sent letters also to the county commission. We hope you take all that in consideration. One of the other things I wanted to say is I'm very grateful to all the teachers and the students, students and faculty for participating in events in the community, be it the Apple Butter Festival, be it decorating. Um, the tree of Valentine's Day, uh, the, the shamrocks at St. Patrick's Day, and there'll be some other things here, here even for the 4th of July we plan to have. Again, that's part of community. One of the other things that since I've been in office for a while and there's been concern to uh, parents and, and educators of uh, the quality of water and we have gone through three water projects and we are getting ready to do the fourth one. In fact, I signed the letter of intent yesterday. So hopefully it will go out to bid here in the next 60, 90 days. We'll see how that goes. But this project that's coming up is a main water line that's gonna run from the Old Garden School all the way here to State Street, which I call um, Harvard Funeral Hall. And in that project, I think we're looking at over, over five million. But we're gonna replace all the meters in town and anything that's coming off that main line, we're going to not only put in new lines to the meters, but meters, lines for the meters to the businesses or homes. So I'm very happy about that. That project's a little different. And it's rather unique, expensive, but again, it's part of the community building. Very happy about that. Now, here is my suggestion to you. 
my parents were good teachers, my dad was a principal, and he would say, dare to be different. Okay. Think outside the box. So I'm going to offer a suggestion. Open up this school in the summer months. Now, I don't like using the term of marketing, but maybe that's what we need to do. And during that time, take education to a different level where you have field trips, you do socialization, adequate food. There's issues in this community. And for me to even discuss that topic, we'd have to have an executive session of what I've seen. Um, but, but do things from a, a, a different viewpoint or a different angle for the school. And I think that population could come back or you could compete with others around us. And to me, it doesn't make any difference where those kids come from in the summer, whether they come from Harrison County or Dodgers County or the kids that, that come or live with relatives or friends over the summer months. We use it as a means to promote the school. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming here. I appreciate all of those that have come out. Thank you. It took high school to get a 504. I watched a child that had two very small kindergarten and first grade classrooms to be combined into a 30 plus classroom for children from second grade to fifth grade at Wilsonburg. They lost teachers due to the talk of the consolidation and numbers and staffing. I see these teachers, how can you put them in a position to have multiple children with multiple 504s multiple IPs and watch them lose these kids through the cracks. It's not their fault that they cannot keep up by themselves. My child went clear through middle school, the same boat to some degree. Nobody would listen because she was a straight A student, that she had ADHD, that she had learning disabilities. Guess what guys, she's got generalized anxiety, a learning disorder that could have been fixed in elementary school. These teachers are going phenomenal in this building with these students that don't get the education help that they already need. I don't know how else to look at it. You're doing this from a high school level to an elementary level of putting them in this position. You've spoke with my child as well about her 504 in the past. I don't know how to beg to watch what you're doing for these kids. Bigger classrooms aren't the answer. I came from Marion County in big classrooms. Straight A student but as well fell through the cracks in high school because I was a high school that had five middle schools that came into it. I don't know how else to look at these kids and these teachers and all around, you're setting them up to fail and it's you guys doing it, yeah. not the parents. Yeah. grandmother, neighbor, friend, and friend students in the Liberty High School feeder area, which includes Salem Elementary, Northview Elementary, Victory Elementary, and Mountain and Middle. This will be the last time I get to speak to you about this plan you have for the merger or consolidation. It is a bad plan. The students now and in the future at these schools deserve to keep their community schools. And as we've seen examples of some of those kids this evening, this school needs to stay where it is. They're not just the school where they go during the day, they're their homes away from home. And in some instances, they're only places of security. The students at Salem and Northview can enjoy walking to their schools, some of them. Their parents can walk with them or walk to meet them. They're in a stable place in the community for them to be proud of. Mount Air Middle and Liberty share a campus and sports facilities, and it's also a place of security for these students. 
It is a place to be proud of when visiting schools come. Our students can show, up, show off their schools. They are small, but our students are thriving. Wasn't it a Liberty student this year who was accepted with full scholarship at Yale? The attention of small school atmosphere helps our students thrive and grow. There are many other options that can be explored to solve the problems of dilapidated buildings. Taking our schools from our students and teachers is not the best solution. It is like all the children in the family are being punished because of the actions of one. I know I am only one of the people you're hearing from, but I'm not just speaking for myself. I've talked to several hundred people, and I've not found one, even parents and teachers at RCB, who are truly for this merger and consolidation. Many do not think it can be stopped. It's a done deal. We can't do anything. The board does what they want to do, is what I'm hearing or I can't speak to groups, or if I speak up, what will happen to my child? Will my child suffer because of that? Too many people are disillusioned with all the faces of government. It's a sad state to be in. I am asking you this evening to take two steps back. Rethink this plan. There are many other options. Show the people of Harrison County, specifically the western area of the county, that our opinions do matter, that our voices do make a difference. Thank you. students, the community, and the parents, uh, it has truly been, it, it's been an honor and a, and a privilege. It's been a blessing in my life, so thank you. Um, you know, I understand budgets and budgeting and, and know the reality of staffing issues and, and staffing concerns because, you know, I deal with that. Um, I, came, I came to Harrison County from another county that had no levy and wanted to consolidate their elementary schools. Uh, to make a long story short, the board voted against it, and the school system came up with creative ways to keep the small community school open. It wasn't easy, but we did it. And we ran bare bones, and it was tough, but we did it. We say we're in the business of helping kids. We're doing what's best for kids. There are times when I need to look back on that. I need to revisit that. Um, the, the fact of why I'm in education. You know, because I get distracted sometimes. I get, I get frustrated. I get beat up by parents sometimes, um, just like this past week. And uh, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes right now. I, I wouldn't want to have to make these tough decisions that you all have to make. Uh, so I do not envy you at all right now. Um, just sitting here listening to the passion and the emotions of everyone. Um, you know, this is very, obviously this is very dear and, 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 and important to people and, and very personal to people. Um, and I'm sure I don't have all the, you know, specifics or details or information uh, to, to make the kind of decision you'll have to make. But this is what I do know. 
I know I got into education to help kids. And I love these kids here at Salem. I, I really do. Um, they bring they bring they bring life to me. And um, I feel so blessed to be a part of this school. So maybe we all need to revisit why we're in this business. Because I don't believe the consolidation is what's best for kids, these kids. Uh, for my kids, for our kids. So thank you for this time. My name is Mike Lane. I graduated from Liberty in 1974 with Tina Salsun and Roberta Kelly Williams back there. Uh, we're, we're planning our uh, first graduate, our 50th uh, reunion coming up this summer. My wife, Kathy, graduated from Liberty in 1975. My daughter graduated from WI in 1995. My son graduated from RCB in 1997. I have two granddaughters that are seniors this year. We're graduating in a few months. Catherine Odom, somebody uh, was one little girl who plays tennis with her. Uh, from Liberty and Lillian Lane from RCB. The one from RCB, Lillian Lane competed in a We the People thing about uh, competition about the, comp the Constitution. They won first place at the States and are going to compete at Washington, D.C. for a national competition. We've got two grandsons, uh, one at Liberty and one at uh, RCB. Uh, two of my older grandchildren graduated from Liberty. And another granddaughter, Laura Odom, attends North U and Will Tim out there middle and hopefully Liberty. I've got two or three little little great great grandsons that are in North U right now, and I want them to attend Liberty. Um, I have a lot of past, present, and future at these high schools and middle schools and grade schools. Can't understand how the, the numbers of the students attending each school and the capacity of each high school and middle school has changed in the last 10 years and since the, the 2021 when the existing comprehensive education facilities plan came out. That plan called for building a new Norwood grade school, a new Washington Irving grade school, an RCB campus, and a new Northview grade school. What happened and what has changed? The Norwood Grade School should have been built. The Norwood parents, voters, and students deserve that school. A new WI Middle School should have been built years ago. Those parents, voters, and students deserve that school. Mount Air Middle School, Northview, Salem, and Liberty are excellent community schools, and the parents and voters and students deserve to continue on with those schools. Seniors graduating this year will be able to vote in this next election in May. And in two years, the sophomores and juniors will be able to vote. I want this board to con consider the input and views of all the parents and parties concerned with the concerns that they have. I don't know how you can anticipate re-election if you vote for these murders, consolidations, and closures. All these schools have, a, have their own individual personality. They deserve to keep them. You're disrupting the lives of the 2,681 students and their parents. Since you aren't building, since you aren't building uh, any of the schools that uh, were proposed in the plan, what is the next building proposal? From the last meeting of Mountain Middle, I found out that the Comprehensive of Education Facilities Plan was a working plan. Here's Category of Education. Can you do the work to build something? Build a new WI. Leave the other 2,157 students from these school here local, leave them alone. Let them, let's go on, let's continue on. The numbers in these plans are all over the place. Nothing is consistent. The workers, the working plan and the impact statements numbers needed to be cross-referenced. The engineering firm McKinley Architect of Engineering put their name on the working plan. The numbers were poorly put together. But as long as we keep paying the bills and paying the invoices, we'll keep getting the same old stuff. This county can support and has supported five high schools since 1991 or 92. 
I know Mr. Cove was still upset about the, the closing of our, our W High School, the last high school that was closed, and that he was not able to move to W I High School as a coach or administrator, at least at that time, but he can, eventually he made it there. Uh, that was approximately 33 years ago. Why close Liberty? Why close any of these schools? All the voters of Harrison County, uh, your representative, your voted on to represent all the voters of Harrison County, not for any one special interest or any personal agendas, and not to take orders from Charleston. The impact statement shows that uh, Liberty and RCB capacities are essentially the same, but I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm positive that they're not the same. It shows RCB has a square footage of 245,000 square feet, and Liberty only has a square footage of 131,000 feet, except that they show that they are essentially the same size. Please reconsider this. Don't for, for, vote for this. Keep Liberty, Mount Air Middle School, Northview, and Salem. And please keep these schools going. Thank you. My name is Stan Heflin. I'm an attorney. I live in Clarksburg. None of my children attended uh, Salem Elementary. But I did. I attended here at Salem, Salem Middle School. I remember having a locker right over there. I think it was eighth grade. I remember Coach Byers and Coach Bastine in, in football eighth grade year. I remember Mr. McLean's shop class, which I believe was right over there. <laughs> Very fond memories. I remember the Salem community. It's always been great. You know, we heard, uh, for those of you that were there last night, Mr. Rogers, talk about how successful the consolidation can be. And he pointed to the closure of Salem Middle School and Gore Middle School. He said, and Mountaineer Middle School was just proof of the success. And while Mountaineer Middle School, it's a good school, but what are the test scores now between what we had then? Why is Mount Air Middle on an improvement plan now? Part of the reason is it's not any administrator's fault so much as it is the larger you make these schools, the harder they are for, on the teachers, the less successful the students are. And make no mistake, that's why you sit on the Board of Education to make decisions that are in the best interest of the students. You know, I had a lot of things written down here this evening to talk about, and, and, and really, I think everything's been covered. You've heard about reports and studies and data. You've heard about the financial aspects of consolidation, how most of the time you don't even achieve your primary gain, and that is financial. You've heard about the detriment that'll be the detriment, the, the, the effects that will be that will be had by all of the elementary students as they sit on a bus, as they're tired when they go home. You know, Mr. Tucker, in, in one of the meetings, and I think it was at the Liberty Building, you said smaller schools are preferred. We all agree on that, I think. This school's proof of it. Look at the test scores compared to the rest of the county. But yet, whatever the motive or the means that are, and whatever pressure this state might exert on the local Board of Education, you owe it to your constituents to make decisions in the best interest of the children, even if they contradict the goals of politicians. We can all agree that the levy is very important in this county. But what happens when you drive the students away like was talked about earlier? How many parents are gonna vote when they have their kids in private school, when they have their kids in charter schools, when they're doing homeschool? 
I don't want my tax dollars paying for it. That's what people have told me. I mean, it's important. It's important for these teachers, but if there's no levy, then you have no teachers because you're not going to be able to compensate them. Then you're going to have more closures. Stop now. Let's be progressive. Let's actually do something original. Yeah. This state has tried and failed in consolidation. All you got to do is look at the test scores. We're amongst the last in the nation. Why copycat? Why do we want to do that? Let's be progressive. There are options out there. There are. We could talk about bonds. We could talk about different financing options. We could get the people a vote. You know what? If the constituents of this county really don't want, if they want larger schools, their votes will tell you. But I don't think that's what you're going to find. I think this is the easy way out. Yeah. What is it that President Kennedy said when we decided to go to the moon? We do these things because they are hard. Okay? And because we want to. Well, let's do something, even if it is hard. I can't remember the principal's name, but he said he came from a previous experience where they didn't even have a levy and they accomplished it. So imagine what we can do. Be brave. Put them first. That's all I got.
We never want to say, oh, a kid is a number. They are, in a way. If they are poured out of the school system, they don't enter the system, what is it, $75,000 over 12 years? That's a lot of money. We don't want these kids out. But if we don't let them do what they need to do, we're not helping ourselves. This is a community. They have the culture. Don't turn your back on this school, on this community, and then ask them for help in two years or a year. We can't do that. Everybody talks about the levy. We cannot do without the levy. But don't make it harder. I won't go over it. I've been here all week. I'm going over So let's talk Mr. Lopez. He's done a wonderful job on the bus numbers. Okay? We live in a rural section. It, it is what it is. It's awful. But what we're missing on those, what's these numbers up here? Uh, what is this? The bus room. How long are we going to have these kids sitting in the bus room waiting for the bus? That is being missed in this. Unlike inner city schools that have multiple routes, here, the elementary kid has to ride with the middle school and high school. So they're waiting for it. Okay. So there's more time, non-instructional uh, non time. So it's, it's more than just, hey, the kids on the bus for 30 minutes. Typically, our kids here are the first ones to get to school. <laughs> Our kids are the last ones to leave the school. Yes. It takes them an hour, but if they're waiting a half hour to wait for, they have to wait for these kids. Hey, everybody, come Tuesday. Sign up to speak. And you did it. Well, I'm going to speak right now. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I the rules are, are that you have to sign up to speak, and I've, I've been liberal on that. And it's time for board member speech. My name is Grant Ritter. I'm a 40 year bus driver in this county. I retired four years ago. I think he deserves it. I drove out of this area for 36 years. Hauling into Liberty, I pick students up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Didn't get them to Liberty until 20 to 8. I have been fortunate to haul a young lady from this end of the county to RCB. Not a Fort that guy in RCB. The trip from Liberty to RCB was a nightmare. Sometimes it took me 25 minutes. I appreciate you all letting me work for 40 years. I've never spoke before the board. But this is one thing I am really passionate on. We were stripped of our terminal. We didn't say nothing. We came here because we had a safe haven. Take chains off the bus. Put chains on the bus. We had a safe haven if students need help. Now you're taking this away from these drivers. This is not very well thought out at all. <laughs> Sir, I have never seen... We have one more speaker, though, before we would have... I'm just about done. Okay. I'll say one more thing. This Board of Education was the most corrupt financially I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> Good evening, board. Thank you all very much for coming to Salem this evening and listening to uh, concerns and thoughts from everyone. Very much appreciated. 
Um, as the speaker earlier, I too have history with this town and with this particular school when it was elementary or when it was middle school. Yes, I had shop class and I had a locker right here as well. And actually right on that stage right there, I was in a talent show. So I, I, I do have a strong connection and a love for this town and I am the city manager and I do have a passion for bringing this city back to what it once was. To do that, we need to keep the elementary school. It is crucial for future economic development, getting families in, getting businesses in, getting enrollment up. It's very important for the future of this community, again, that I want to bring back, and it will happen. With that being said, this building is still in excellent, excellent condition. I've always believed the expression, don't fix it if it's not broken. Mm -hmm. I stood here or sat here tonight and I've heard about the students excelling and getting higher than average test scores. Don't fix it if it's not broken. <coughs> I've heard about the long bus rides, how this is all going to be detrimental to the students, to the teachers, to the community. Of course, it seems like right now it works pretty good. Anyone, please raise your hand if you think Salem Elementary School is broken. Please don't fix it if it's not broken. Seen the car. This is 
All week long, I've listened to her, heard all the people speak, all the parents speak. I've heard some of them speak six times. Uh, but I will say this, this little young man right down here was the best speaker that I heard all week.